and uh, the this reflection um, we broke it up into two halves. Um, so I'd like to reflect on the first half of it, if I could, for a couple of minutes. Feel free to interrupt me. Yeah. All right. Um. And yeah, ask yeah, yeah. anything you want. All right. Okay. First of all, it begins. Okay. Yours is a shield. All right. That you are not simply as a letter, a uh, a, a volunteer. It's going to take a while. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll be here. Instead of a volunteer, uh, you are more agreeing to be. Okay, honey, love you. Are we? Okay. All right. You are agreeing to be an instrument of God's word. You're a messenger. So the the the, the fourth little statement there, I, I called each a paragraph. I don't know they're small paragraphs, but the fourth one down, you are a messenger of God's love. Five and six. He challenges, confronts, consoles, he feeds hungers and longing. And what you need to realize is through you, he's going to do this. So you see what I mean by the very first one. You are an agent in the work of God's spirit. So what's your task up there? Well, I take the second uh, my, my second thing is, after you're an agent of God working in people, and remember what Paul has shared with us today, it's not about stuff Jesus did in the past. This is where St. Athanasius, their practice, can teach St. Agnes something. Uh, at the pulpit at St. Athanasius is a candle. And that candle is lit during the word because this is God's real presence for us today, right? If it were the ancient church, I'm talking about the third century, you know how you have a vigil light at the Blessed Sacrament because of the real presence? There yeah. would be a vigil light at the pulpit. Okay. You know? Uh, yeah. Just. So we can make that happen, can't we, Father? Well, I think I think it's a practice that you could that uh, the the collaborative could adopt. Sure. It's, um, it's a good practice. Um, to, the accent well, that. I, um, I can't do it now. Are you okay the way it is? Yeah. Yeah. So somebody's talking. If you could put yourself yeah. on mute when you're talking, unless you want to share. Yeah. So uh, what's your task? Well, Tom mentioned the task already. Okay. Your task as an agent of God's spirit. And this is uh, paragraphs two, three, and eight. Your task is to tell the family story. Okay? Your task is to realize that that story today is, suppose, is, is calling people to healing, comforting, consolation. It's calling people to be fed to have their hungers and longings take care of. Okay, now, if this feels a little overwhelming, uh, what I would hope you would do is that between this week and between now and Wednesday, 
you would read the whole reflection over and come to uh, and and continue to read it over maybe once a week for a few weeks and to see what um, what the Lord is saying to you about this. See, I think as the task goes, if you've been healed by the word, comforted by the word, challenged by the word, consoled by the word, fed by the word, if you've had any of those happen to you, then you can read it. One of the points Austin, Father Austin makes is um, anybody can read the word, but only a believer can proclaim it. Mm. And see, it's the proclamation that is going to be that thing that will uh, touch people's hearts. So listening to what the word does to you and I is really important. Now the third piece of uh, your task is to realize, and this is number eight. Yours is to offer the story. Your, which, yours is to offer the story? Is that the one? That's number eight. Yours is to offer the story of the good things that the Lord has done for us. See, you're preparing a bridge here because then we go over to the Eucharistic table and we give thanks for what the Lord has done for us. See? Some people think they listen to the word after as you read it and then the priest does his thing so we can get communion. Right? <laughs> but that's not what it's meant to be. It's meant to be Meeting. you hear the story and you connect with what God is doing in you this week. And then you bring to the table with the gifts and the offering of Jesus to his father. You bring to the altar table your great thanksgiving. And all through that prayer, the priest says, you are thanking God for the great things he's doing. Mm -hmm. And even the great things he needs to do, and you're not ready for it, okay? Mm -hmm. um, that's so important. Lastly, um, and we can talk back and forth about this, but lastly, um, Austin goes around the 10th one with what you need to do to your work. Because this is work. You know, um, it takes a little bit of preparation. So he says, what's the beginning of your preparation? Come to your work. This is number 10, I'm quoting. Come to your work from your own personal prayer. Praying that the Spirit will open your heart to the Word. You know, later we'll talk about sometimes um, the Word is one you relish. You know, mm -hmm. it's talking about God so loved the world and it's wonderful. And then there are moments yeah. when God turns around and uh, challenges all of us, and you say, uh, no. Where is he? <laughs> Yeah, where is he? You know, yeah, where is he? Or where is he? And what's yeah. he up to? Um, if, I can, if I can just interrupt for a minute. Go right ahead. Father, um, yes. uh, Paula um, changed the screen, so I can only see six people, including myself. <laughs> yeah, and, Paula, you're screen sharing. Yeah, yeah but it's, um, it's not sharing anything except a blank screen. Here and it does say that there are two documents, but when you click on them, nothing happens. I have the document, so I don't really need it. But um, I don't have the document. I, I want. Can you see it on this? Nope. Nope. Yeah, I don't think anybody can see it. I see oh. you, Father, and myself. 
Okay, hold on. Well, you can't oh, click on the screen so. picture of the document oh, to open I it. I did. I did, but yeah, it doesn't. That, that, that's just a picture of Paula's screen. So yeah, let, me, so let me try again, Deb. I'm sorry, but I thank you for that. Um, well, there's a new face. Can you see? Oh. That? Yeah, now I can see. Yeah. There you go. Oh, well. yep. okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks for letting us know that. All right, because I would really like you to have a copy so that you can continue to reflect on it and it works within you. Okay, so um, I was down at number 10, which is the end of the first page there. Come to your work from your personal prayer. Pray that the spirit, pray that the spirit would open your heart. All right. The first thing that has to happen is your heart to be open to the word, so that then you can convey it to others. Eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So the first three at the top of uh, the second page. Study. You need to prepare it. You need to take time with it. I'll tell you what I do. Um, I read, I used to have a Bible study on Monday and I relished it because it, it, uh, the Bible study was on the next Sunday's scripture and it really gave it to me ahead of time. I don't do that anymore. So what I, but what I try to do is at least Monday, Wednesday and Friday, you read the readings with a special accent on whatever one you're doing. You know, um, because as you will see in 11, let it make, uh, I'm sorry, I lost, I lost my you place here. Uh, it, it let it dwell deep within you. Yeah. Come, come to the word with a, with a awesome presence that it's the Lord's word you're proclaiming, all right? Um, I don't see it with our lectures, praise God, but I see it in the class sometimes that, that uh, one of the teenagers or somebody can proclaim the word like it's the Sunday Globe. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, not, it's not a living word, right. you know? And um, this is a living word. Let it make a home in you so that you're, you're in awe of it. Um, when, when I, um, if I can interrupt here for right a minute, um, you know, being, I'm, I'm a teacher. Mm -hmm. So I always approach it from the point of view, you know, first I, I read it if, Three t usually three times. Um, sometimes I might practice out loud a little bit. Um, and I usually approach the reading as a lesson um, for the congregation. And I, I don't know if other people think about it like that, but that's what I do. So I try and put the emphasis on the words that are the lesson. Um, yeah. And usually, you know, in the books that they give us, um, the lecture books, Mm -hmm. They usually have like little examples on the left as to which mm -hmm. words to emphasize and um, maybe an explanation. Mm -hmm. So reading all those little details is very helpful. Um, but I, that's how I approach it, as if it's a lesson for the congregation and myself. Now, there's an interesting point that I note there, and I'm glad you told me. Uh, you're a teacher. And right. what you immediately, you, you, uh, you liken it to uh, something that uh, is part and parcel of who you are. It's, it's like a lesson, okay? Yeah. See, and so that comes across to me like you're internalizing it. And when you're internalizing it, or when each of us as, as a reader internalizes it, then we can pass it on with awe and reverence. Mm -hmm. Not drama, okay? <laughs> yeah. and, Austin has something to say about drama later, but uh, but with because he, 
you get the sense that um, it's affecting you. It will affect us. It becomes authentic. Exactly. Good word. Good mm -hmm. word. Now, I, I didn't hear that word. What word? Authentic. Like it's authentic. authentic. That's what I was thinking yeah. when you were sharing, Debbie, that, that it, yeah. it does become, it, it jumps off the page and now has become a part of you. So therefore, you know, because it is living, it starts to manifest in you, right? And, and bring about, I, I think, what the spirit wants you, you know, to teach from it, right? Or, or to consider thought, thinking about it. Exactly. Um, I want to I wanna bring up one thing that uh, Austin, I stopped at the 50th paragraph, which is uh, about a little way down the second page. Approach the ambush. And Lydia just loved that word. That's the pulpit. All right. Uh, I don't think half the world knows what we're talking about uh, when we use that. Is but, foundation? Um, approach, he says, the pulpit, the table of the Lord's word, as you would the Lord himself, with reverence and all. There's a sacramental sense here. I know the pulpit's word. Or I and somebody, a good uh, couple of uh, uh, carpenters in the parish can whip one up in a half an hour. And I know the cross when we bring it down the aisle on Good Friday is was was made by Larry Tester, ours. And um, you know we can find out who made Saint Athanasius's. I know that. But there's a sacramental sense here that the pulpit standing there and the book of his word. Is the person at uh, the same way uh, the Eucharistic sacrifices the person of Jesus, and again, that's why the, the candles in both places, you know, like enthroning, yeah. enthroning the word, yeah. So, you, you always, um, you always want to approach it. Like it's really the Lord Himself. You know, I say this about the Eucharist, but we say it about the Word too, and the sacramentals we use. In one real sense, you will never get closer to Jesus on this earth than you do in that sacramental presence, Word and Sacrament. You know, um, and sometimes we cradle-born Catholics are uh, a little used to. And we're so used to it that it's kind of like, yeah, I did this last week. Yeah, that's what, you know, and we don't, whoa, wait a minute. Uh, appreciate what you, what, what you stand before. Uh, I think we could grow a lot in a lot of our, our sacramental understandings if we took it that way. You know, when the cross comes down the aisle on Good Friday, and I miss that so sincerely with you present this year. But when the cross comes down the aisle on Good Friday, as far as I'm concerned, that's the cross of Jesus. Um, made present for us. Yeah, and Larry, Larry Testa was the agent that did it at St. Agnes. And whoever made the cross of the Athanasius was the agent there. But doesn't matter who the agent is. That's the cross. And if we come and approach it that way, we just have a, a little reverential sense for what we make that a little louder. Uh, the former pastor here at St. Agnes, Arthur Ferg, to say that if we really understood the sacrament of the Lord's body and blood, we'd wear crash helmets to max. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think that's in a way true about the word, too. That uh, next week we'll start with the reading that talks about the word being active and effective. And if you listen to our liturgy, and you heard it today in the scripture, our important feasts, Christmas, Epiphany, Good Friday, uh, Easter Sunday, today, all the time it talks about this is the day. You know, not the past, but this is the day. Um, so, yeah.
so like I said, there's a great deal of realization here. I wonder if you look down the page, as far as we've gone, if there's anybody who would like to add anything. I stand up, folks, because I'm looking at the time. That's what it's okay. <laughs> Um, I know uh, I when I'm preparing, I often do what Debbie does as well, um, and I use it as part of my, I, I read scripture every day, and when I go and try to meditate on it afterward, you know, for maybe 20 minutes, sit with my eyes closed, and I try to think about it to see what jumps out at me, what what is being, what's God saying to me, you know, i mm -hmm. listening for that voice. Um, so that's just, you know, if that helps some people think about what it is that they are proclaiming and that's something that might be a practice some people could use. I also think about, um, I don't know if ever anybody remembers, somehow I got from Father uh, Rivers when he was here, a uh, print of a morning prayer. And one of the, th and I say that as part of it, and one of the things that always jumps out at me is, the line that says, may your Holy Spirit living in me shine your love through me to all I need today. Exactly. And so mm -hmm. I, I try to think about that when I'm preparing that. for uh, the readings. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, think, I, think that's, um, I think that's so important. Um, yeah, I, you know, if, what is it doing, what, like at, at St. Pius and Lynn, when we had confirmation kids at Mass, uh, sometimes we would take a small group after the gospel rather than the homily, we'd take them into the Blessed Sacrament Chapel on the side where they were out of the room where the Mass was going, where the homily was happening. And we'd say to them, okay, what's stuck? Okay. What of all the readings on the psalm, did anything stick? Mm. And it was very interesting because, of course, there's the word spoken, and then there's the word heard, and then there's kind of what the Spirit does with it, you know? Mm. Mm -hmm. So that nobody would have the exact same thing that stuck or hear it exactly the same way. It depends on how you came that day. But it was interesting it's, to do that. So that that's a great insight. What, uh, yeah. what, that's what makes it the living word, because exactly. it depends upon what you bring to it every day. It mm. depends on what you bring to it. And it's always new. It always has a new thing for you. Mm. Um, Can I say something, Father Ed? Go right ahead. Sure. Um, so another part, what I find very, um, very moving for me is um, also immediately after reading, it's like um, to take that time. Um, and because that, for me, the spirit like really washes over me. It, it's, it's, um, it's an amazing feeling and um, like I relish in that um, of, of feeling like I've am in you know closer um, been touched by the spirit like immediately after that's it's like I'm washed over with um, you know, such power the spirit's job since the birth of Jesus is to make him um, so the spirit will come and he will take the word and just enliven it for you. And that's what I mean by washing over. Me. Okay. Um, you know, I was sharing the other day, I have many friends and a, a friend of mine is, uh, preparing for ordination in the Orthodox Church. And uh, I grew up with him in Somerville. And he was, uh, 
He was talking about some of the things the Lord did for us in of all places. Some of now, I grew up in Cambridge, but close enough. Um, and how, how God made, you know, how some things you never see, but you look back on it and you see what God has done. Yeah. All right? And that's, um, you're telling the story yeah, of the right. marvelous things God has done. So that people can get in touch with the marvelous things God has done. And then you go to the table to offer that uh, with Christ to the Father in the Spirit. You know, um, one of the, the, I think, one of the things we, we emphasize the word in Vatican II, which is wonderful. But one of the things that we, we somehow never got around to is to, uh, to, to appreciate that uh, we take that word to the table, <laughs> to give thanks for it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's not just the... Uh, Father, I was uh, interested in the last four paragraphs of the, of the uh, piece that's on the screen. I, for me, that's sort of the... Uh, way to make the word come alive for the congregation because uh, it speaks about uh, you know eye contact uh, you know clarity of voice uh, you know I like looking at conviction it. strength and mm -hmm. uh, the last paragraph is particularly interesting about uh, you know you don't need to supply the drama you need to convey the drama that's uh, yes. contained in the scripture yes um you don't need to act it out. Uh, and to put it the way my uh, preaching teacher told us in the seminary, you don't need to act up. The spirit will act. If you just make it, if you, if you just allow him to be present, he'll act. <laughs> okay. He'll bring. Um, Look at that's that's uh, one of the benefits of um, reading it out loud several times at home the week before between the hints, the hints in the book and becoming familiar with the context so that you can inflect and reflect properly right. to yes. get it across to the congregation. Yes, absolutely. Um, I, would, I would never go without reading it several times out loud. Um, It'd be that word that would throw me off too. <laughs> oh yeah. I also get nervous when I end up finding myself, you know, filling in for somebody yes. unexpected. Yes. Um, yeah, so you're on I today, always, by the way. Yeah, I feel yeah. comfortable. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. You feel comfortable with it after you've read it several times out right. loud. Right. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you one. Uh, mm -hmm. One time we had a very tragic death in the parish of a young man in a car accident, and uh, so I went to the house uh, to tell the parents, along with uh, a deacon to tell the parents that he had died in car crash and then spent a lot of time with the parents. The pastor was the principal celebrant of the funeral. And I've been involved all along. But anyway, I'm fine with that. I'm walking up the aisle with the pastor and he turns to me in the procession and he says, you preach it, right? Not fair. <laughs> Not fair. Oh, oh no. <laughs> um, talk about... Um, you know, the that's spot. the occasion where all your You're preparation praying. from previously and yeah. everything you just rely on. Right. Uh, I, I went up to the altar and I kissed the altar and I said, Holy Spirit, you got to make this present. This <laughs> I need help. I didn't know yep. what the readings were because <laughs> I didn't plan the funeral. <laughs> um, but, but I did. I said, you, you rely on what you got already and your experience and God works. Uh, Maria, Father Ed, yes. Marie, Church, Marie Churchill wanted to make a comment. Please. Um, when I, every morning I read and I write the scriptures, and after I do that, I just feel God in my heart, and it's, I'm clear and I'm steady, and it makes me feel different. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, it is... Uh, one of the things very important, if, um, 
you know, it, it will affect our person. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and um, it, uh, it will seep in mm -hmm. and, uh, to our lives. No question. No question whatsoever. Um, I think um, that uh, pacing is very important also. I've noticed um, that, you know, people who take their time and read the scripture like yours is a share in the work of the Lord's Spirit who opens our hearts to God's holy word. Speaking like you're conversing with the congregation is important. And uh, I don't know, and I can't say in particular who, but sometimes like you might have a teenager or somebody mm. who, um, who, who runs through it as fast as possible, doesn't stop at the punctuation, doesn't mm. see the spaces between the paragraphs and uh and i think people lose it you know truthfully mm -hmm. so pacing oh. i think is really really important when you're reading yes. that you you know uh speak as if um you know people actually kind of making people listen it's kind of like um if you speak a little more slowly mm -hmm. people have a tendency to be turning their ear to you and listening as opposed to if you speed through a reading where people are not mm -hmm. listening. You know, when I was in conversation, break, like a conversation is the reading. Right, like a conversation, right. Said, when I was in Braintree, we had a lady who was blind from birth as a lectern. I always admired her courage that she would do that. She had a Braille lectern on, and she would walk up to the pulpit with her uh, seeing eye dog and get up at the pulpit and open her lectionary. And at that point we were having one lectern. So, um, and I'll tell you, and then she would wait mm -hmm. and then begin. And I'll tell you, um, if the Lord himself was reading the word, it would have been quiet. Mm -hmm. It was just a, 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 a settling down and a settling in uh, because of her, not because she was blind, she read very well, but because she, uh, of the, the kind of method she developed, you know? Yeah. Very important. Um, you know what, too? I, I just, if I could yeah, add, go right ahead. I, I, first of all, I, I want to thank each and every one of you because. Um, you do add so much to to really um, uh, the thing, and 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 for me, each word is intentional. You know, it's in there for a reason, and you're you're so much more eloquent than I could be. So I love when you hang on a word, right? Because it's there for a reason, and 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 that really is what feeds people, right? That that ponder within and breath within a line to, to have us kind of have it seep into our hearts. It, it's so important. And if you do read it, you know, at, as a script and too fast, without any emotion whatsoever, because it's so emotional, because it is our story. Um, and you're all great storytellers. But um, so I so appreciate, because I'm not the best reader, I so appreciate when you've taken the time to prepare and, um, and you understand your task. And, um, and also, you know, that whole Holy Spirit, Father, you know, uh, it's amazing. You, I, I don't know if, if this happens, but you know, the divine reading that we have on the website that I think we do on Friday, right, which has the gospel that teaches people to read through things at least three times. I think, Deb, you were saying that, or maybe Polly, you were saying that. No. And, you know, like the first time you hear it, and the second no. time something's speaking to you, and the third time you're almost moved to respond, right? And yet sometimes you want to take a step, but you have no where, where you're going to go, right, with, with that step. But um, so I want to thank you all for, for those insights because um, – with the pandemic, just want to say how important the lectors have been, right? The preaching of the word has been because that really has been feeding. And when you talk about parents and children and you're talking about First Communion, they're kind of, 
you know, they ignore the liturgy of the uh, re, uh, word to get to the liturgy of the Eucharist, and yet, um, you know, I mean, there's a marriage there, something yeah. very holy yeah. there. Enjoy. Integral, one's integral to the other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, two things. Paula just brought up in my mind a, uh, uh, the Lord got up to the pulpit at Nazareth, read Isaiah, and began, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's part of that agent of the spirit thing that you want to inculcate. The spirit is upon me because he has plans for you and everybody else out there. And he's going to use you to do it. And that's something we always marvel at. When I do lay retreats, one of the things we always marvel at is the fact that the Lord equips us and sends us out to be instruments. And uh, when he does that, it's astounding what his power accomplishes in us. Um, everybody, that, well, all the lay people that do retreats with me will always say, boy, I got more, way more out of that than I gave. Um, and uh, that's the way grace is. It's always like that. The more you're an instrument, the more gifted God gives you, the more gifts God gives you. So. I want to make a recommendation, then I think we should stop. We might be a whole two minutes early. Yeah, eight minutes. Yeah, so let's stop a few minutes early. And let's just say this. If you could take the two, page, the two pages that are up on the screen now and the other page and just read them um, before we get together Wednesday, we'll be doing Wednesday at 10. Um, please do that if you can. And we'll go from there. Today and then okay. Okay. That's good. And, All right. And so, I can send them out again if you need them. Yeah. Your regular um, email. Let's uh, let's pray for a moment to end. Thank you, everybody. By yes, the way. Thank you. Thank you, Father. And you, Father. Yes. As we celebrate uh, the Holy Trinity working in our midst, we pray. Glory be. To the, the Father, 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 and to the Son, 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 Son and, the and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. The Holy Spirit it was in the beginning, now, beginning is now, now and ever shall, shall be, be world without end. end. Amen. 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 God bless everyone. Thank, Thank you, Father. Father. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. Have a great day. Yep. Great job. You too.